Hi, my name is Nick and this is lesson one in how to make polymer clay cutters and cookie cutters using Fusion 360. As it's lesson one, we are going to be covering just the basics. So the cookie cutter that we'll be making is going to be a four centimeter circle. In future lessons, we will be going into more tools, more designs, um, but for now, let's keep it basic. We're going to explore four different ways you can actually make a cookie cutter or polymer clay cutter using Fusion 360. And then that way you'll be armed for the future on how you want to design yours. So when you open Fusion 360, you'll have a canvas a bit like this. I like to work from a top view. So if you see this view cube up here, I am going to click top. It orients for me, which is wonderful. So now I'm ready to start putting my sketch down. So if we go over here and click on the Create Sketch tool, it will ask what plane I want to sketch on. As we have a top view, we can only really clearly see one plane. If I was to use the Orbit tool, I would be able to see the other axis that I can actually draw sketches on. And now I'm going to click the Escape key just to get rid of the Orbit and go back to top view. And I'm going to select this plane because I want to do it from this view. So we're going to select a circle and we're going to select from the centre diameter. That is generally my preferred one, although there is a two point circle and there's other options in the create. But if you want to follow along, select the centre dimension circle. So we're going to select a point and Fusion is really good. It does tend to snap points to certain areas so it kind of gently pulls it in if you're close it'll pull it into the center point there. So I've clicked there for my center start point and I'm going to pull it to the side. So again, Fusion will snap point it and it does actually show the dimension as well. So I can make it very accurate. I can also type how big I'd like it. So in this case, 40 millimeters, because it's four centimeters. And then I will click again to set that circle. So I'm going to zoom in using my mouse pad there. And I've got a good view of this four centimeter circle. What I need to do now is build offsets for my cookie cutter polymer clay cutter walls. So we've got this tool up here, the offset, and I'm hovering above it. You should see the pop up. You can see in brackets it's gone. Oh, that is a keyboard shortcut. If you are going to be using Fusion 360 a lot, learning these shortcuts is really handy and does make your workflow a lot quicker. So although I will be showing you where the tools are in the toolboxes, I will be telling you or advising you, you know, what keyboard shortcut to use. OK, so I'm going to press O and I'm going to select this. Now, the first cutter I am going to make is going to have a 0 0.7 millimetre cutting wall. I'm going to set that. Ooh. 0.7, hit enter, and it's set that. So this is my original circle, four centimeters, and this is it, 0.7 millimeters bigger. The next wall I'm going to set is what's called my handle. So it makes it a bit more comfortable um, when you're using a clay or cookie cutter to not necessarily be holding on to a 0.7 millimeter wall. It also makes it far more durable and the cookie cutter far stronger if it does have a nice thick base. So I'm going to click this, I'm going to hit O for offset, and in this case, I'm going to make it three millimetres thick, and I'm going to hit enter. And that is my first sketch for my first polymer clay cutter done. So I'm going to hit finish sketch. Just going to zoom in a little bit closer here. Now, we're going to use this extrude tool, which is a keyboard shortcut of E. You can see it in the brackets there. So hit E. And what I'm going to do is this is my cutting wall, the 0.7 millimeter thick wall. So it is currently got a black line on either side, which means I'm hovering over it. And that is a wall it's going to select if I click. So I'm going to click and now it's highlighted blue to confirm that it has got this area for me. So I like to make my clay cutters at 12 millimeters tall. I find that is a good height to work with. It cleans nicely. It's nice to handle. And also it's not too tall that it takes a while too long to print and it also helps save material as well. So click 12. Now the sketch has disappeared. It always does this when you do your first extrusion. 
do not worry about it. We're going to get the sketch back up. So you're going to go here to sketches, click this arrow, and then click the little eye here. And there we go, the sketch is visible again. And that shouldn't happen for the rest of this document while we've got it open, um, because it only happens on the first extrusion there. So zoom back in, and again, keyboard shortcut E for this extrude tool here. And we are going to make this three millimeters tall. And there we go. We have made our first polymer clay cutter. And this is a 0.7 millimeter tall, um, not tall, wide tall. Um, it makes quite decent cuts. Um, sharp edge cutters do clean uh, cut cleaner. But this will tend to print well on most 3D printers. And there shouldn't be any issues with that. So what we're going to do, we're going to save this cutter as what's called an STL file. A lot of um, 3D printer slicers, they will work well with STL files. So we'll go to bodies, we'll click servo, click on this body and then right click and save as mesh. So mine always defaults to STL, which is great. That's how I save my files. And then refinement, it's up to you for something this simple. Medium is absolutely fine for me. Then I'm going to click OK, and then I'm going to label it. So I've already set a four centimeter circle in my files, but if you wanted to organize it, you could go here and create a folder. Um, but 0 0.7, so four centimeter wide circle, and then click Save. That is it, saved your first circle clay cutter. So we're going to explore another way, or not another way, how to make a no sharp edge circle clay cutter. So this is one with a thinner wall, um, but it does tend to create cleaner cuts on polymer clay and cookies. So we're going to go to sketch, because we can create a new sketch, but we're going to work with our existing one first of all. We're going to right click on that, click edit sketch. Now we are going to make another four centimeter circle and zoom in O for offset now i'm going to make this a 0.44 millimeter wall the reason why i do 0.44 not 0.4 millimeters is the standard nozzle size for most printers and uh, most people will set it up on that you can obviously get smaller ones that will make finer prints or you can get bigger ones and they will print bigger but generally 0.4 millimeters is a standard nozzle size and easy for most people to use I make mine slightly bigger than 0.4 uh, nozzle just simply because in certain cases certain printers do tend to have a bit of trouble printing a 0.4 millimeter wall with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle they like it to be slightly thicker so that's why i make it slightly thicker so my stl files will actually print well for other people as well so that is my cutting wall I'm going to make a support wall on this because if I was to extrude just 12 millimeters or 0.4 millimeter and handle, it would be brittle. The cutter would not last long. Um, so I'm going to make a support wall. So this is one millimeter thick. So this will go up almost the height of the cutting wall, but not quite. And it will give it strength. And then again, my handle is three millimeter wide. Perfect. We're using the same tools. As before, we're going to finish our sketch and it is the extrude. We're going to extrude this thin area first. So E on your keyboard, it is highlighted black. So this is 12 millimeters tall, the same as my other one. And then E for extrude again on the keyboard. And this is my support wall. So I'm going to make this 10 millimeters tall. So it's just two millimeters shorter than my cutting wall. Um, but it is on the outside, so no imprint will be left on the inside of the shape. So it will be pushed outside. And that, and then my handle, the V millimetres, because that's how thick I like my handles to be. So that one is done. Let's save that. So SE for sharp edge, 0.7, or centimetre wide circle. Perfect. And we'll do a little side by side for you. So I'm using my orbit tool. So you can see this one's nice, thick and strong. And then this one's got a nice sharp edge to give a really clean cut. 
and then the support will then so it makes it nice and strong as well. Now, I offer 0.7 and 0.44 millimetre walls. I do not do a sketch for both. No, no, no. <laughs> um, what I tend to do, I tend to do one sketch and I'll show you how I do mine. So again, go to sketch, right click, edit. So this is how I personally do my um, cutters. So again, four centimetres. Now O for offset, I will actually make a one millimetre offset and then O for offset three. Now instead of using the extrude tool that we've been using, we're going to go into surface. We're going to use this orange extrude tool instead of this one. And we're going to click on this wall. We're going to make this 12 millimetres tall, so the same height as all my cutters. Now using the orbit tool, for some reason, it's ghosted this one, that's fine. We just pull this forward. So, you can see this will make a very, very thin wall that will not print. So, we're going to make this thicker. So, I'm just going to press the escape key to get rid of the orbit. Now, the thicken is here, so shift and T. So, shift and T, we're going to click this wall here. So if I was first of all making my 0 0.7, I had 0 0.7 and now I want to make the handle. So E for extrude because that pulls this extrude key. Uh, so E for extrude, I've got my extrude pop-up, I click this and this is the one millimeter gap but it's already got my 0 0.7 thickened wall in there. Now I want to make this three millimeters tall. Now the operation set to cut, we will switch that to join and click OK. And this cutter here is exact same as this one. So if I wanted to go save this one, so save as mesh, OK, B2, not point seven. I have made that one then when I make new I just click undo twice and I'm back to the thin wall as you can see so shift and T and I'm going to make this 0 0.44 0 0.44 and that is my sharp edge and then this will be the support wall because this is one millimeter thick so I'm going to make this 10 millimeters tall and again I don't want it cut I want it to join so select that and three millimeters for my handle. So this cutter now with this same sketch, this clay cutter is now the same as this one. So save as mesh. So version two, sharp edge. So that way I can make both the cutter versions that I offer with just one sketch. It makes my life easier, makes my sketch pads a lot simpler for me personally, but you pick what way works for you. You may only want to offer one cutter wall type anyway, um, especially if you are printing and selling your own designs, um, then it's just whatever you feel gives best quality. So the next way that we're going to do it is a wall type that I did start off with, um, but it did prove to be quite complicated to do on more complex shapes, um, which is why it is a wall type I do personally no longer offer. But it does work very well on simple shapes, you know, circles, you know, a simple leaf, um, but anything with like jagged edges or like a lot of little bits, it, it can prove a bit bothersome to actually successfully do but I will show you but it does look very nice on a finished clay cutter so I'm just going to escape sketch edit sketch and again you guessed it it's a four centimeter circle surprise surprise okay so offset so O on the keyboard one millimeter offset O on the keyboard three 
So we're going to make this um, 12 millimeters again. So E4 extrusion, click on it, it's highlight 12 millimeters tall. It goes to this one, that's fine. Let's just pull it forward, it shows it. Then E for extrusion again. So V, join. So this one has made quite a chunky cutter, you know, chunkier cutting wall than the 0 0.7. However, go to solid and then chamfer. Apologies if I'm saying that wrong. It's not something I've ever had to say in conversation to anyone, but we will click that. So what we're going to do is basically shave a bit of this uh, wall off at an angle in order to give it a sharp edge cutting wall. So the edge that we want to select is this one here. Okay, and we do want to distance this so make sure that one is selected. So in order for this to be a 0 0.44 millimeter um, cutting wall, you do have to do a bit of maths. And um, because I've made the it a one millimeter wall, in this case, then I need to shave off 0 0.56. So it's taken 0 0.56 off this top bit. But I want it to shave off a bit more downwards simply because that doesn't give it a great cutting edge. So if I made it two millimeters, Again, it could possibly do with a more sharper cutting edge than that. So if I make it five, and then click OK. So what you will see on this one is, let me zoom out, it gives it a nice slope. So instead of the other cutters where you've got a wall going up and then across and then up again, it gives it a nice slope. It's a very nice look, um, but like I said, on more complex designs, it's not something that necessarily always works well. But let me just save that one. Um, version, perfect. Oh, I spelled that wrong. Right, so just to recap, we have made four four centimeter circle cutters, one with a 0 0.7 um, millimeter cutting wall that works pretty much prints well on most printers. Then a sharp edge version, a 0.44, and um, that works well with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Um, generally, to get good prints uh, for 0.4, somebody must have fine-tuned their 3D printer, um, which you don't necessarily have to do so much with a 0.7. Um, a 0.44 gives lovely clean cuts on polymer clay on cookie. Um, there's so much less sanding on polymer clay um, when you use a sharp edge cutter, really recommend it. Um, then we explored how to use one sketch, but make two cutter versions. And again, you can make whatever cutter versions you want, um, but that is by using the surface extrude and then the thicken tool, which is different from the others. And then we have made a chamfer version as well, which gives a nice clean slope of a cap but again that doesn't work that amazing on quite complex designs or i personally have not made it that amazing on quite complex designs so this is your first lesson and um, with further lessons we will be going and do more complicated things i just want to start you off the basics show you a few tools and um, you copy along on something nice and simple and um, down the line we'll be doing you know, pulling in SVGs, using them, DXF files, you know, designing from start to finish in Fusion, using mirror tools and, you know, making sure we're doing cutters with bridges and imprints because, you know, people love them. Um, but if there's anything that you would love to see, please drop me a comment of what you'd like. Let me know what you're struggling with as well so I can do a future lesson plan with that involved. But otherwise, I will probably see you again on the next lesson. You take care then. Bye.